Okay, uh, and talk a little bit about um, how I financed my early studies. I have spoken about it a couple of times before, but I still get a lot of queries from international uh, people, uh, people from the US and Europe. How I was able to uh, get enough money to get an education. Well, here in Australia, um, we have a pretty good welfare system, well, we used to have a pretty good welfare system, um, and I was getting some welfare, but at the same time, that's obviously not enough to pay for an education. Um, the first part of my education, uh, which was a bridging course, I paid, paid that off. Um, I went in and I negotiated with the college and each Monday morning I'd go in and I'd pay $23.50 or something to that effect and that would be my week's learning. So I did that for the first year. During that time, um, well, towards the end of that, in Australia we have uh, we have a um, like a, a council collection. That's where people throw out a whole lot of rubbish onto the curbside, and the council trucks will come around and collect it all and take it to the recycler and recycle it or, or goes into landfill and stuff like that and what I did was I saw you know I had never seen anything like that before and when I once I came out of the forest and I, I saw some really cool stuff in thrown out people thrown out really cool stuff like uh, baby prams and bicycles and skateboards and old kettles and microwaves. So every Sunday morning at one of the youth clubs there was a like a flea market. So I, I went and I, I sort of picked up some of the better quality stuff out of the throw out and Give it a tinker, give it a bit of a you know, tighten the nut, shine the bolt, and then I'd take it up to the flea market and sell it. And to my surprise, I did quite well. Sold a lot. Um, so I got an idea to do that, and I did that each weekend. Um, but Obviously, that wasn't a council throw out every week, so I kept some of the money that that I uh, I earned, uh, and then I'd get up really, really early in the morning, uh, Saturday mornings, and I'd go around to the grad sales and I'd buy a few things from a grad sale, and I'd take them to this flea market, and I'd sell them, I'd put a profit on them depending on what it was and what I thought it was. And I made some money that way. And I did that over time. And I made quite a bit of money after a while. And enough money to buy myself a, a little van that I could drive around. I got my license. Did that, obviously, it all takes time. Um, the problem with the little van was that I still couldn't sleep inside. So I wasn't sleeping inside the van. I used it, I'd park it in the street and I'd walk down to my little sleeping place in the sand dunes. But um, that was in about 2000, end of 2003, no, no 2004. So I was still, you know, by then I'd gone and started university. And in Australia, there's a system. You can uh, you can go and do a, a you know if you if you qualify if you go through and you do the do some um, 
jump some hoops and that you qualify you can get into university and you don't have to pay for that until you start working so you can do your degree and then when you start working and you start to get your, in, your income and once you're earning over I think at the time it was about over 50,000 a year then you start to pay back that debt to the government it's a real, it was a really good scheme, um, I'm not sure, I think it's changed a bit. By the time I had graduated my undergrad, I think I owed the government probably $60,000 um, for, my, for my undergrad, but I was able to pay that off over time. With my PhD, um, well, part of my undergrad, I did an honours year. And when I wrote up my honours, my honours was called, I'd like to tell you a story, but I'm not sure if I can. And it was about people who had experienced institutional care and were abused in institutional care. And... Um, there really hadn't been a lot of work done in that area previously. And when my, when it went away, it was examined, and when it came back, um, I was very privileged. I, I earned a first class honours, which is a, a pretty high award in Australia. And um, on the back of that, I won an Australian scholarship to go and do a PhD. So, I didn't have to pay for my PhD because um, you know the scholarship it was a stipendent scholarship. Got paid each fortnight uh, to go to go and study full time. But I also worked. By that time, I worked as a tutor as well, a tutor and a marker and a lecture, and I was learning to um, craft my my academic skills. So. That's how I paid for it. Um, it wasn't easy, and it had its moments. But you know, I I, need, I didn't give up. I never gave up. And I always stayed focused. I always knew that there would be something at the end. Something I, I don't reveal very very often. Um, I used to keep a diary in the early days because that was a part of. That bridging course was to keep a diary and in the diary I kept a bird feather as a bookmark. And I kept the bird feather there because I kept thinking an education represents freedom, freedom of thought. It gives me access to a broader world. So that that feather, and I've still got that feather today, that feather became symbolic of my future freedom.